It's the rundown on the Big Rapids Media Network Sports Network. And today we're going to talk about the recap of last week, what happened in uh, in the conference and the different games. And then we're going to talk about our picks of the week for this week, and uh, we'll get right into it. So uh, let's go with an introduction. So kick it off, Joe. Uh, introduce yourself, please, what you do. Hi, I'm Joe. I'm just kind of here to hang out. I board out. So that's really about it. He's our producer. He does good stuff. Next. <laughs> I'm JT. Uh, I do the uh, Big Country uh, or the Big Rapids games on Big Country. And I'm Brandon Worth. I do Reed City Coward football on Y102. And there were some pretty extreme games that uh, I don't think we were really expecting last week. So let's start with uh, with Big Rapids. Uh, JT. Give us a rundown of what happened on week one. Yeah, so week one was, uh, I, I would say, the 34 to 13 score in favor of Papa was not really indicative of how the game flow went. Uh, Papa tacked on a couple, couple of points late in the game. Uh, they scored 12 in the fourth quarter when things kind of was a nail in the coffin and then things kind of got out of hand. Uh, but for the majority of the game, the Rapids was either leading after the first quarter. Um, they were um, trailing by one going into halftime, and then they were only down a score and a half going into the fourth quarter. So they they were in it for the majority of the time. It's just that they gave up or they scored 13 points, and then they uh, they then gave up 34 unanswered. Uh, the offense just didn't really click um, after the the opening. A couple drives. There were some mistakes that they weren't able to overcome, um, but the defense was stellar despite the uh, the thirty four points. Um, you had some some kind of remarkable individual efforts, uh, specifically on defense. You had Philip Wilbur, who I had with uh, eighteen tackles all by himself in the game. Um, that was going through the film and doing my own stats. Other sources had him at 17, 15 and a half, but I saw I counted up to 18 total between his assists and his uh, solo tackles. So as a middle linebacker, Wilbur, he was in on uh, every play, cheese, as uh, as he's known, thanks to me. Um, but uh, the defense was also on the field because of the style of offense. It's similar to Reed City. Papa, uh, their offense was on the field almost 70% of the game. So for the defense uh, to give up what they gave up with uh, – uh, being on the field 70% of the game is pretty good. Um, offensively, what clicked, you know, uh, in the first half, Riley Venix uh, at quarterback, he looked really comfortable first half. He was 11 of 14 for 199 yards. He did have a big pick, um, but he did also have, a, I think it was 72-yard touchdown to Caleb Dabowski. So he he definitely looked better than he looked not good. He only had, I'd say, two moments where – he fumbled the ball in the second half. He had the interception. His second interception, he got thrown out the window because it was kind of garbage time. They were just trying to force something. But uh, for a quarterback to step into a system and take it over for the first time, and Riley having 256 yards in the air with a touchdown, as well as another 30 yards on the ground, was pretty good. Pretty good for him. Um, it was once they brought pressure against Riley um, because coach Seltzer likes to run a lot of empty sets with a lot of wide receivers does did not utilize a tight end in any formation so uh, that left Riley susceptible just on a numbers game to a lot of blitzes um, so once they started bringing pressure uh, things kind of shifted around he in the second half he was six of 17 for 15 yards so they, once they brought some pressure started flushing him out started chasing him down he struggled to put the ball in the numbers a little bit more uh, but overall, I thought the players all looked pretty good for Big Rapids. So heading into week two, um, I, I expect this offense to throw up way more than 13 points, the defense to give up way less than 34 points to a New Ego offense that also is uh, – they're, they're in a new system under a new coach. So there you go. That's week one going into week two for Big Rapids. All right, Reed City, Brandon, what you got? Yeah, many people asked me about this game against Kingsley, and the Stags have a really good football team this year, and we definitely learned that going into week one. We knew this was going to be a powerhouse matchup, and I think the only way that I could describe it, uh, just based off recent memory of being a part of the Reed City program for many years, was Kingsley out Reed City. 
Reed City. And that was really what it came down to. When it came to the trenches, Kingsley had the size, they had the experience, and especially, especially, the number one thing that I saw was the patience in the run game was huge, and not necessarily just trusting it over and over again, but the actual patience out of the backfield. They would run a lot of misdirection sets, a lot of reads from the quarterback spot, and they were making the right reads a lot. We had a lot of great pursuit on that Coyote defense, uh, but the Kingsley really flipped it on its head and really used it against us and they were able to break some big runs i know they had two 40 yarders in the first quarter and that kind of really set the tone right away for kingsley they had a pretty big advantage 20 to nothing at one point in the second quarter uh we were able to score before halftime just to cut the damage a little bit uh but we knew we needed a second half flip and it really just kingsley came out absolutely stuffed us inside in the run game and really used that to our advantage to push us outside and they really just did a great job and as far as contain from the outside backers to the corners and even especially the inside backers having that pursuit to get through. Uh, they did a great job and you got to give your hat to Kingsley. And I know coach Schenkel said that post game was, he was saying that they really were a good football team. And we learned a lot about ourselves going in uh, after that game, just watching it, I'm sure over Sunday. Uh, but I think this will be a very interesting game against Tri-County because I think there were some good glimpses. Obviously, Jack Deitch, one of the new players in the program, being able to break an 83-yard kickoff return, that was pretty sweet. Um, so that was a nice highlight play for him to get some confidence as he had a drop touchdown pass earlier on in that game, uh, which I know he would love to have back. Uh, but especially when you look at the outlook of that game, uh, Kingsley was just bigger on front. They controlled the trenches, whether it was defensively pushing the offensive line back two yards every play or offensively pushing our defensive line two yards forward each and every run it was a tough thing it was a really uphill battle it was just a really tough thing to watch as a as the coyote fanatic just to see a team using your own scheme and your own strengths almost against you it was really weird to look at it almost through a mirror uh but i think this was actually a really good thing for this football team of course you'd love to see a win uh but i think really when a lot of those players left that field you could just tell right away that they were saying, this is not going to happen again. Like this is a one-time thing and this is going to be the change of where we're going with trajectory of the season. Uh, so I think we're going to see a really good, interesting game here. I know Joe's probably going to touch on Tri-County here, but I think this is going to be a really offensive slugfest here we got going up between these two teams. And we saw 88 points a year ago. I think we could see that maybe even higher potentially here coming up in week two. That's a big prediction. I like it though. So, Joe, what do you what do you got? Tri County. I know that's your boy. So, uh, your boys. So, go ahead. Give us a rundown. We saw it uh, last week, especially. I mean, that was the biggest kind of. They put up a lot of points last week, but that was the biggest concern that we had uh, talking about it last week. Was are they going to be able to kind of restore that offensive firepower that they lost in Stuart Gold and uh, Trent Barrenwald? And they were able to do so, putting up a 50 spot on Comstock Park, who's in no slouch of a conference and was a team that made the playoffs just last year. So for them to be able to put that many points on the board first game, as well as against a good opponent like that, it's going to be it's pretty promising to show what's going to happen uh, this next week. They did give up, uh, I think it was 23 or so. So that kind of says that the defense might not be where they want it to be. However, I'm I'm pretty excited for this Reed City game because I think it's, like Brandon said, going to be an offensive shootout once again because you might expect probably both teams breaking the 40 mark just like they did last year. Yeah, and these are always a, a good good game to watch. It's always exciting to see, especially like uh, like you said, after last year, it was uh, just a powerhouse of a game and just a amazing game to watch. So that should be a, a really good one. Um, now let's let's move on to uh, to predictions, if you will. So let's let's give our predictions. I know that last week they kind of got jumbled up because we all went with either Reed City. Um, I, I think Joe was the only one that got one right. Right? You you got yours right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so now it's going to come down to uh, to Brandon and Joe. One of them's not going to win this one. I think this year or this week. So. Uh, we'll start off with Scarp. What you got? Um, well, I think that let's see. Uh, for we'll just start with with my game, right? So um, for Big Rapids, again, they're facing they're at home. They're facing a uh, a team also in a new offense. Um, so I just think that they're going to bounce back big. Uh, those individual performances will start coming together as a team. Uh, you know, Coach Seltzer talked to me about how how happy he was with a number of, of facets um, that they accomplished, but that he's always looking to improve. Um, 
you know, the, the big thing about high school is uh, you don't have a preseason. You have a couple of weeks to get ready and get ready to go. So, Brandon, like you were saying, the, the Kingsley effect on Reed City moving forward, I think you'll see something similar because there is no reason why Big Rapids couldn't have won that game against Papa. I thought that they were overall better athletes. Um, so we'll see them put it together this week. Um, Jack Bowman's going to – he's probably going to be a, a much more involved in the offense. He only had, I think, uh, seven total touches against Papa. So they'll get him running out of the backfield and uh, – Big Rapids will they'll put it on Nuevo a little bit at home to get their first win of the year, but I got uh, you know a couple games, a couple other games. You know I talked to some some other coaches like uh, the defensive coordinator out at Chip Hills. Brad Ancliffe was telling me um, you know his his defense obviously did very well, only giving up uh, two points to Olivet. So he's got something brewing out there with the Warriors. So I asked him, is it outlandish to assume that your defense surrenders 12 or less points to Grant? And he said their goal is no more than six points. So he feels pretty confident. He said Grant will go to the air a lot, um, but he feels pretty confident that Chip Hills is going to be able to shut down Grant. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to take his advice. I'm going to go with the Warriors. Um, and then uh, Central Montcalm, Kent City, that's another good game, that one in Stanton. Um and Central Macomb was not challenged in week one at all with their opponent. Uh, Kent City went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nuego and, and pulled it out. They have a knack for winning these games against Grant, Central Montcalm, and Nuego uh, uh, down to like one or two points. So I think they're going to do it again. They're going to move to 2-0, and um, and, and they'll, they'll knock off uh, Central Montcalm in Stanton. And then, and then I, got, I got this is my – this is probably one of the least interesting games – in the area of the week, but in my opinion, it, it could be the most fun. Morley Stanwood is going to end their 12 game losing streak on the road at Kalkaska. Is this your Kalkaska, Hail Mary? This is my Hail Mary. Kalkaska is not good. They're not good. <laughs> they haven't been good in a long time. This is their chance. This is when the Mohawks will strike. I don't think there's going to be on that. There's not going to be a whole lot of striking. I don't think there's going to be a high scoring game, but someone has to win this game at the end of the day. And I think Marley's going to do it. It's a good prediction. I'd like to see that, uh, that end up coming to an end, but uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, Joe, who you got? Give us a rundown of uh, who's your pick for the week and who's your Hail Mary. Uh, I, I'm going to say the Grant Chip Hill game as well. Uh, I was really looking forward to that one because Grant, last week did a really solid job with their offense. But then if you look at it, Chip Hill is only allowing two points. I mean, even if it might be against a team who's not super great, two points putting are holding it down for the whole four quarters is impressive nonetheless. So I think it's going to be just like JT said, Chip Hill is going to hold it down. I don't know if they'll hold them to that six point, uh, like, uh, threshold that they want. I think it might be. Dude, Anklip's a dog though. Hey, I a dog. He's going to be all it. over it. I don't doubt it, but. Hey, I'm not trying to, no disrespect. I, I believe he's a dog, but I'm just saying maybe six points is going to be a tough task for a team. I think Grant put up what, like four, yeah, 40 to eight against Kellogg'sville. So, hey, ball don't lie. Nah. They know ball. So who knows? Nah. But I think Chip Hill is going to come out with it uh, this upcoming week. But my Hail Mary is I think the Reed City and Tri-County game could break 100 points combined. That's, <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Whoa, Yo! that'd be huge. That'd be huge. Awesome. Well, I, I like it. Tri-County has struggle against that wing T offense. I mean, last year with, I think Reed City put up 40 points or something like that. So that's not the greatest look for your defense and tri County being able to put up 50 spot as well as a 48 point, uh, 48 points last time they played them. I think you're going to see it as well. I mean, I know that we worried about them not putting up points, but week one, they showed it out. So I think that hundred point, uh, hundred point total could get, could get broken this week. Right. What, what do you got, like a 65 to 42 game? I think it's going to be like a 52 50 or something like that. It's going to come down to the wire, but they're going to barely break that threshold. I'm, I guarantee you. <laughs> it would be insane to see those numbers. But then again, crazier things have happened, you know, so it, it would be interesting. But uh, either way, Brennan, who you got? Who's your pick of the week? Who's your Hail Mary? 
Well, first of all, I'm going to buckle my seatbelt. If Joe's prediction gets <laughs> right, I'm going to have the time of my life. It's going to be a lot of, live, it's gonna be a lot of yeah. live tweeting on my side if I have to. Yeah, <laughs> boy, that would be something. You know, 120 points. It's like we're playing NCAA football 14 or something. But, uh, no, I think this will be a really fun week of football. Uh, I think especially that my game, of course. I mean, I got to stay loyal. I will be with the Coyotes this week. I think it still will be a high-scoring game as much as I could see it the other way around. I mean, I've looked at the past seven matchups between these two teams, and at least I believe it was the last two especially have been very close high-scoring games, and offense has been the, the absolute winner in all seven matchups where the winner has scored, I believe, at least 35 or 40 points to be able to win that game. So we're going to see a lot of touchdowns. We're going to see a lot of points on the board. Uh, I think Reed City can pull this one out. I think it's probably going to be within a touchdown uh, or maybe even two scores at the absolute max. I can't see it getting more of a blowout like we saw last week. Uh, but as far as some of those other games, I think that Moy Stanwood game is very intriguing. I'm glad JT went and brought that one out because I think this is a prime week for them. Uh, and as much as I would hate to admit, he might have stole uh, my, you know, my Hail Mary of the week, but that's okay. I do have a backup though. And I got to give Kent City some credit because they held off Nuego last week. And that was enough respect for them for now me to pick them this week for my Hail Mary against Central Montcalm at Central Montcalm. Central had a little bit of an easy week last week against Moly. No disrespect to Moly whatsoever. Uh, but I think when you looked at the way that that scheme circumstantially played extremely into Central's favor, I, Kent City is more of a resilient football team, and they have a little bit more talent on that team, and they are a good road team as much as the record might necessarily say that they could be beat. I think this could be a really good matchup for Kent City. I think with their tonnage, I think with their size, they can really make this an interesting game. And Central Montcalm, like you said, JT, they're a little bit banged up there before week one and a little bit banged up from week one. So this is going to be a really intriguing game that I'm going to be looking out for. I'm going to pick the Eagles to win a nail by in my Hail Mary of the Week. Kent City, don't let me down. You are all in on this one, so don't let me down. Good stuff. Yeah, and, so, and you know, some, something else I like about Kent City with this too, so uh, I, I've been chatting with a couple different people about this. There's there's not a whole lot of stability in some football programs in the area uh, as far as coaching staff, right? Uh, Grant, Nuego, like you've had, you've had a lot of turnover over the couple over uh, the last few years. So really big Rapids and Reed city have been two of the more stable, right. Coaching stabs that you have. Now it seems like Palong is settling in Cripe at central Montcom is starting to settle in, but with Nuego, you have uh Grop is in his second year coaching, but he coached under crane who was there for a long time. So I think you, you'll have some, continued success with Kent city moving forward. But I, I just, I like the matchup for Kent city. I don't know why it's just a gut feeling. I'm with you, Brandon. I love it. So the game's coming up. Um, Scarp, give us the, uh, the time and, and how to tune in and all that for the, the, the big rapids game. The big rapids, big country game is uh, so it, it's, it's different than all the other games. So every game but Reed City uh, in this conference this week is on Thursday. They're all at 7 p.m. Big Rapids kicks off at 6 p.m. though. Reed City, you guys are doing your own thing, I guess. So we kick off at 6 p.m. Thursday. We'll, I'll be on air at 545. All right, and you can listen right in at uh, Big Country 100.9 for all of that action, uh, including the pregame. And, uh, Brandon, what's, what's the game time? What's the rundown for the, the Coyotes game? Yeah, so I think the CSAA just decided to uh, pull an NFL like Monday Night Football switcheroo and just wanted to give us the spotlight for Friday, which fine by me. That's totally fine by me. So Friday, 7 o'clock, 6.45 pregame uh, on Y102, 102.3 FM, WYBR.com and the WYBR app. On the app, it is absolutely clutch because you can go anywhere and listen in to the broadcast no matter where you are. You could be honestly in Florida and you can check out Coyote Viking football and that's pretty cool. Uh, but you can also follow Follow along live tweets. This man down below, Joe Nagy, is going to be doing live tweets for me as well. Um, that'll be at Y102WYBR on Twitter slash X slash whatever that platform's called. So you can follow along with all the score updates, all the big plays, that and more for Reed City Coward football coming up this Friday. It's going to be fun. Lots of high school football action all season long, and this is going to be the rundown for you. It'll give you all the information that you need to know to arm yourself with what's happening in and around 
the conference. So, uh, guys, thanks so much for hanging out yet again today. And uh, we'll do this all again next week. We'll see how our predictions roll out. And that's the rundown for the Big Rapids Media Network. <laughs>